Even though they're both considered North American, there's a huge difference between studying in the US and studying in Canada. The way that the course is structured and the way that the subjects are taught are the same, but when it comes to certain other key areas, they vary greatly, right? So in this video, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at how the quality of education varies between Canada and US, uh, what are the costs of studying, and you know, how, what is it like to work after you graduate, what are the immigration policies like, and so on, okay? So let's get started with the quality of education. Now the quality of education tends to be higher in the US as compared to Canada. Now I'm not just saying that, I'm basing this fact on the rankings. So here on the screen, you can see the rankings for the top eight universities in the US and the top eight universities in Canada. As you can see, the top eight universities in the US have a higher global ranking as compared to the top eight universities in Canada. So from this, we can sort of understand that the trend is that American universities tend to be a little bit better than Canadian universities. So if you're looking for a place with the highest quality of education, the US is the way to go. But of course, if you're studying in the best university in Canada, you know, compared to like an average university in America, of course, the quality of education is gonna be better in that Canadian university. Next, let's look at the cost of studying. So by cost of studying, I mean both the cost of living as well as the cost for you know, tuition. Now cost of living is a little bit complex because it depends on you know, where you stay. For example, if you stay in Toronto or if you stay in New York, you know, those are like expensive cities, so it's gonna be really expensive to stay there. However, if you stay in cheaper cities such as Edmonton or Indianapolis, then your cost of living is gonna be much lower. So this is why cost of living becomes a little bit complex to analyze. However, what I can tell you is because the Canadian dollar is weaker than the American dollar, when you convert from a different currency, generally Canada is gonna have a lower cost of living. And the same cost is reflected in the tuition fee as well. What I actually did is I looked up the fee structure for the number one university in the US and the number one university in Canada. As you can see, for a master's degree in MIT, it costs 106,900 US dollars. And for a master's degree at the University of Toronto, it costs 63,470 Canadian dollars. From these two figures, you can tell that American education is more expensive than Canadian education. But the thing is, fees tends to vary, again, a lot across universities. And generally, the lower the rank of the university, the lower the fees, right? So see, since these are the fees for like, you know, the top universities in Canada and the US, you can generally expect other universities to be, you know, cheaper and cheaper than these particular values. But the summary is that the US tends to be a lot more expensive than Canada. And finally, let's talk about working after you graduate. Now, when you guys go study in Canada, you will be getting something called a study permit. So this allows you to study in Canada for the duration of your program. After you graduate, you have to apply for something called the Postgraduate Work Permit or the PGWP. Yeah, that's right. So this permit will allow you to stay in Canada and work for the duration of your program. So if your program was for two years, you know, you'll be able to work in Canada for two years. So while you're working, you know, towards the end of your PGWP, uh, you have to apply for a permanent residence. Now, after you get your permanent residence, there is an easier path. There is a simple path to citizenship. Now in the US, how it works is when you go, when you guys go fly there to study, you will be going on an F1 visa. So the F1 visa allows you to stay there and you know study there for the duration of your program. After you graduate, you have to apply for something called an optional practical training extension on your F1 visa or like the OPT extension. So the OPT extension allows you to stay for one year if you're a non-STEM student or three years if you're a STEM-based student after you graduate and you know, you're allowed to work there in the US. After that, you have to, of course, apply for an H-1B, which is like, you know, notoriously difficult to get. And even after that, you know, if you want to stay beyond that, you have to apply for like a green card and stuff. And that's like a super complicated procedure. But the moral of the story is that it's easier if you want to, you know, work and immigrate to Canada as compared to the US. The US has a like complicated immigration policies and most of the time it doesn't work out. And that's it. Personally, I prefer the US because of the higher quality of education and the immigration thing is not really a big deal for me. But you guys should be making decisions based on what's important to you. Is it quality of education? Is it cost? Or is it, you know, working after you graduate? So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. And if you love this video, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you later with more graduate program related information. Bye bye.